Hey, it's the girl Sarah Mack with a brand new video and it's for the month of October and it is the Sacrament of Holy Orders. But before we get into the sacrament itself, I want to ask everyone, why is it called Orders? Let's get into it right now. And it is found in your CCC, the Catechism of the Catholic Church. 1537, the word order in Roman antiquity designated an established civil body, especially a governing body. Ordinatio means in or incorporation into an ordo. There are three orders. So there's the episcopate, which is the bishops, the presbyteriate, which is the priests, and then the diaconate, which is deacons. Um, and then 1538 further goes on saying the word ordination is reserved for the sacramental act, which integrates a man into the order of bishops, presbyters or deacons and it's beyond an election or institution because um, ordination or holy orders um, confers or grants a gift of the holy spirit that permits the exercise of a sacred power which can, can only which can come only from christ himself through his church so that is why it's called holy orders ordination ordo um order ordination ordinatio in latin sorry that is butchered but yes so it all um, is aligned with the word holy orders okay um now that we know that let's get into the sacrament itself you know a sacrament is a visible sign instituted by christ administered by the church and it confers or grants a grace each sacrament has a matter minister form and effect Okay, let's get into the matter right now. And that is found in 1573. So we need the bishops laying of hands, which is done during the ordination. We need the consecratory prayer that the bishop reads. Um, and of course we need the ordinan, which is um, another word for the persons that will be ordained as priests that day. So three things. Um, and then the minister, which I just alluded to, is the bishop found in 1576. Um, since the sacrament of holy orders is the sacrament of the apostolic minister, ministry, it is for the bishops as the successors of the apostles to hand on the gift of the spirit, the apostolic line. Validly ordained bishops, those who, those who are in line of apostolic succession, validly confers the three degrees of the sacrament of holy orders. So the bishop can ordain priests, and uh, deacons and I guess other pre other bishops but um, if you are going to ordain um, a bishop then the Pope um, has to be involved but that is also found in our CCC um, so yeah and then the other part of the sacrament of holy orders is the form so I'm going to read you the prayers that is said during the ordination of each order if you want to say and that's found in 1541 1542 and 1543 so 1541 uh the prayer for the ordination of bishops this is just a snippet of it it goes god the father of our lord jesus christ by your gracious word you have established the plan of your church from the beginning you chose the descendants of abraham to be your holy nation you established rulers and priests and did not leave your sanctuary without ministers to serve you 1542, at the ordination of priests, the church prays, Lord, Holy Father, when you had appointed high priests to rule your people, you chose other people next to them in rank and dignity to be with them and to help them in their tasks. To ex you extended the spirit of Moses to 70 wise men. You shared among the sons of Aaron the fullness of their father's power. 1543, in the ordination of deacons, the church confess, Almighty God, you make the church Christ's body grow to its full stature as a new and greater temple. You enrich it with every kind of grace and perfect it with a diversity of members. To serve the whole body in a wonderful pattern of unity, you establish a threefold ministry of worship and service for the glory of your name. As ministers of your tabernacle, you chose the sons of Levi and gave them your blessing as their everlasting inheritance. So that's just a snippet of the prayers being said. Um, and the respective um, ordinations. So um, for the bishop, for the priest, and for the deacons. And that is found in 1541, 1542, and 1543. And the last part of the, of the, um, of the sacrament is the effects. And that is found in 1581. 
And the first effect is the indelible character. 1581 reads, This sacrament configures the recipient to Christ by a special grace of the Holy Spirit, so that he may serve as Christ's instrument for his church. By ordination, one is enabled to act as a representative of Christ, head of the church, in his triple office of priest, prophet, and king. 1582 further on goes, As in the case of baptism and confirmation, this share in Christ's office is granted once for all. The sacrament of holy orders, like the other two, confers an indelible spiritual character and cannot be repeated or conferred temporarily. So just like baptism and confirmation, it cannot be done again, it cannot be repeated, it can't be revoked, it can't be removed. Like you are a priest, deacon, or bishop for life. Like you are marked for life. And that's what indelible um, spiritual character means is you are marked uh, permanent. Okay, the second effect is the grace of the Holy Spirit. For, um, and it starts with 1585. The grace of the Holy Spirit pro- proper to the sacrament is configuration to Christ as priest, teacher, and pastor of whom the ordain is made a minister. 1586 goes further for the bishop. This is first of all a grace of strength, the grace to guide and defend his church with strength and prudence. Um, and it impels him to proclaim the gospel to all, to be the model for his flock, and to go before it on the way of sanctification by identifying himself in the Eucharist with Christ, the priest and victim, not fearing to give his life for his sheep. Um, and then it further goes on, 1587, um, the bishop, while laying on his hands, says, among the other things, Lord, fill the Lord of Sorry, Lord, fill the, with the gift of Holy Spirit, um, that whom you deign to raise to rank of the priesthood, that he shall be made worthy to stand without reproach before your altar, to proclaim the gospel, to fulfill the ministry, to offer your spiritual gifts, to renew your people. Um, and for fifteen for deacons, 1588, it says, Deacons are strengthened by sacramental grace that are dedicated to the people of God in conjunction with the priests and the bishop in service of the liturgy of the gospel and the works of charity so each um order has a role but um the common thing for all three is to serve its people to serve its community um and that's such a beautiful thing isn't it um i want to further go on um and answer the question who can receive this sacrament Um, And that is also found in your CCC Catechism, uh, 1577. Only a baptized man validly receives sacred ordination. The Lord Jesus chose men to form the college of the 12 apostles. And the apostles did the same when they chose collaborators to succeed them in their ministry. 1578 is one of my favorite and I'm going to read it twice because it's very important. No one has a right to receive the sacrament of holy orders. Indeed, no one claims this office for himself. He is called to it by God. I'm going to read that again. No one has a right to receive the sacrament of holy orders. Indeed, no one claims this office for himself. He is called to it by God. Mm, that's so, that is so special. And I want you all to think about that. No one has a right. Okay. Um, they receive a calling from God. And so... If they choose to answer that calling, um, may they remember that it is an unmerited gift. It is undeserving, um, yet you are a, being chosen to be an instrument of the Lord. Ooh, so powerful. Um, and I'm going to put this down because I have a very special surprise for y'all. I was able to interview four priests, four priests. Um, And I would love to share that with you. And you will hear um, from different priests. So for two priests, I was able to Zoom with them and just chat with them uh, via Zoom. So shout out to Zoom. Um, The other two, for the sake of privacy and just honestly busy schedules, um, they were just able to correspond with me um, through email, which is great. And I will read their responses to you. But all of the priests, um, I asked the priests, um, the same six questions um, and so without further ado here are my interviews of the the priests um, where are you from what city 
Yeah, what's up, everybody? Um, yeah, uh, my name is Father Raj Derivera. Um, I'm currently assigned to Sacred Heart Parish in Anderson, California. That's uh, Northern California, kind of close to Redding. Uh, but I grew up in the Bay Area. I grew up in Vallejo, born in San Diego. So California boy through and through. But yeah. What <laughs> What was the most valuable lesson I learned in this in the seminary? Ooh, um, you know, I was thinking about this um, earlier, and and definitely like everything I learned about spirituality, everything I learned about theology, all those things are important. I'm using them every day. I'm using them in council with other folks and, and all of that. But I, if I, if I'm being honest about what's the most valuable, like enriching life lesson that I got, I, I think it was, um, it was like the brotherhood in the seminary, mm -hmm. right? Like that, um, we were on this journey together, like the, the you know, the, the different brothers, and we came from all kinds of uh, walks of life and from different ages and different cultural backgrounds and all that stuff, different faith stories. Um, but we were, there was a fraternitas, right? There was this community, koinonia, this, this understanding that, um, you know, we were connected, even though we were different. And, um, you know, I, and I try to bring those lessons to, to the parish now, and, and they, they continue to affect, you know, all my ministry, whether that's, um, you know, doing things with youth and young adults, or whether that's uh, at my parish council, or even my finance council, to, you know, this recognition that we're connected, that we're, mem we're members of the body of Christ, we're, we're, we're different, yes. um, we're unique, um, but we are, are united. And so I would say that I, I really appreciated uh, the level of, of fraternity, um, uh, brotherhood in the seminary and, and that lesson it, it sticks to me I, I still I'm still you know good friends with lots of the guys in the seminary I still maintain that um that fraternity with them even if it's just group text messages <laughs> sending random gifts and memes <laughs> to one another no but uh yeah. It, yeah we still we keep that we keep that sense of uh, friendship sense of fellowship yeah Mac I'm with Father Bong um, he is another priest that I would like for you to all know and get to, um, you know, learn from. Um, so Father Bong, um, let me know, or, uh, let everyone know uh, where you are right now. Well, hi, Sarah Mack, and hi, everyone. <laughs> I'm currently at St. Patrick's Seminary. I'm a faculty member here, but I actually belong to the Diocese of uh, Sacramento. And so I guess uh, I am for rent. <laughs> okay okay nice nice way of putting that um, no on loan on loan there you go during your time in seminary uh what was i mean i know the whole time that you were in seminary is very valuable um but but what is one thing that has stuck to you or stuck with you until now i had um a, a really good advisor and mentor uh frederick sikowski <laughs> Uh, he's a Sulpician priest, and he said, be a man of integrity. Before you are a priest, you are a human being. Mm. And yes, we have private lives, and we are all entitled to a private life, but we should not have a secret life. Mm. Be a man of integrity. That's that really yeah. is where I want to be and that's how I want to die. <laughs> okay, that's good to hear. Thank you, Father Raj and Father Bong for answering the first question. Um, for the second question, I wanted you all to hear everyone's responses and so I'm just going to read them out loud. Um, and like I said, I did interview four priests um, and the question I asked them was, who was their confirmation saint and which saints do they look up to um, as a priest? Um, so one uh, father um, said um, they look up to St. Francis of Assisi, St. John Vianney, who is the patron saint of priest, and St. Padre Pio. The other uh, priest said um, he didn't have a confirmation saint, but um, he does um, look up to St. John the Baptist, uh, St. John Paul II, and St. John the Twenty-Third, who were also popes um, of their time and now are saints. Uh, Father Raj also said uh, St. John, oh sorry, St. John Paul II, um, and he also looks up to St. Therese. Um, and me and, and Father Raj also share our confirmation saint, which is St. Gabriel. Shout out to St. Gabriel, you know how much I love him. And Father Raj also 
I looks up to St. Peter. Hello, the first, the first though, the first to succeed the line. Um, and Father Bong um, says that he didn't have a confirmation saint either, but he did. He does look up to Our Lady of Loreto. Um, in case you don't know, Father Bong's real name is Father Loreto Brojas. Um, and so, you know, um, uh, for him, it's more than a name, um, you know, since Loreto um, derives from Our Lady of Loreto, he, Father Bong wants to make sure that he upholds the dignity of Saint Our Lady of Loreto's name, and that's what he lives by. So um, that's beautifully said, Father Bong, um, and that's amazing to hear. The third um, question that I asked all of the priests is besides the Eucharist, besides communion, what is your favorite, uh, what is your favorite, um, your favorite sacrament? Um, we're going to hear from Father Bong and Father Raj, and then I'm going to also read to you the other two priests' responses. So watch it right now. So a uh, phenomenal question and a great one, and I could talk about this for, for hours, but I won't. I'll try to hone in on it. <laughs> okay. Um, I, let me let me clarify the question first though uh, yeah. do you mean like me personally as just raj right or do or me as a priest celebrating the sacraments is, let's which, do both let's do okay both, both. <laughs> okay no los dos okay yes. all right um yeah i think um goodness um <laughs> i mean i i i guess I mean, yes, the Eucharist, I spent many hours before the Blessed Sacrament has always been an important um, part of my faith journey. Um, you know, for, for there's not, there's, I mean, there's something just so powerful about um, knowing uh, that, that God still has hope for you and believes in you. And so the Sacrament of Reconciliation is, um, as much as I've, you know, I've, I've been, <laughs> I've been broken in my life or I've done things I think I wasn't proud of or messed up to recognize that God still looks, looks us, looks at us in the sacrament and, and says, you know what? Yeah, you're right. You messed up in this way. You've made some bad choices, but, but I love you anyway. Mm -hmm. I think that it's always been, um, it's always been there for me, right? As, as the sacraments are the reason that God, that, that Christ institutes them is so that we can have access to him and, and his grace. And, and I, no joke at the very, very important moments of my life, like I, I would have priests um, be available for confession, right? And so like, or, or I'd be somewhere where I could go to confession or even when I think I wasn't gonna be able to, to get to confession, there was that something happened that made it, you know, a friend invited to go to, to church or, or was like, was going on a day retreat and I asked if I wanted to come. And so then there was confessions there, right? So all these, yeah. like, so for me, um, yeah, uh, reconciliation. And uh, as a priest, I still, I still, you know, I go often, um, you know, <laughs> I try and get, it's harder when you're up in, in, you know, I'm up here in the North and yeah. there's less priests and less religious up here. Yeah. And so, to, to, but I still try and see my spiritual director pretty regularly. So, um, uh, so there's the answer to that question. Um, <laughs> You know, celebrating celebrating the sacraments as a priest. I mean, they're all privileged, right? They're all yeah. amazing to be able to uh, enter into to folks' lives, families' lives, and in, in these moments, and be used as an instrument of love and mercy. It's it's um, it, I don't have words, right, it, to explain how amazing it is to just be used by God in that way. Yeah. Um, I could I could speak about the great the great joy of um, celebrating. Uh, um, um, reconciliation, like I was just talking about, like, so to flip that, like, yeah. I, it means I know, like, uh, um, yeah, so there's, there's a great joy about that, um, I, I, but you know what, the one that just pops into my head, uh, celebrating Mass, phenomenal, celebrating mm. mercy of, of, of uh, God through reconciliation, phenomenal, but the one that just popped in my head, and maybe it's because I've been doing a lot of marriage prep lately and, and whatnot, but, but yeah, you know, it's, it's, um, I know some priests who, whose thought is, like, um, they love the sacrament, but they, 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 in celebrating the, the celebration part of it, right. they, um, some priests, uh, I think they, they it's lower on their list okay. their weddings, just because okay. sometimes you have to deal with, with, um, lots of requests from the bride. Maybe, mm. if, you know, I don't know if anybody's seen the, the TV show Bridezilla's, <laughs> um, but so there's a lot of pressure there. Um, but, um, but, you know, I, I think it's incredibly beautiful. And for me, the preparation part of it, getting to work mm. with couples, is just I I um I'm I'm moved by you know the different stories of love of of a desire to love um one another, 
and um, and then to be able to be invited in that way to help nourish uh, maybe things that need to be nourished in 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 couples vision of love or mm -hmm. or to be able to kind of give them something new or a different perspective and show them you know um, how their love is relatable to god's love all mm -hmm. of that is great and then then that all and then all that plays out in the sacrament how yes. we celebrate the sacrament <laughs> and all the signs and symbols of of um the wedding uh, ritual so yeah um they're all great i don't have a favorite <laughs> that's really a very difficult question because okay. um i i love them all really um I have not, I have been, I, I've been able to do a confirmation on Easter. Mm -hmm. I, I love it. So I love the different sacraments. It's like making you choose <laughs> yeah. uh, between, uh, I, not that I can relate making choose, letting you choose between children. I don't have children. Yes. Just to be careful, okay. just to be clear. Clear, yes. Um, uh, but they're really, they have different uh, uh things uh there there's different aspects that i really um, yeah. appreciate so with the eucharist it is a summit and fount with the yes. community it's it's a meal and at mm. the same time a sacrament uh, a sacrifice it's a sacrament a sacrifice you know you have this relationship with god and myself and then at the same time it's a meal that i don't eat uh like I'm in a drive-thru when I'm in the Eucharist. Right. I want to make sure the community is alive and the community mm. understands what's going on. Yeah. Um, however, uh, the sacrament of reconciliation is something so precious because I am able to witness on a one-on-one -on -one basis, mm. on a very privileged uh, moment, a conversion of heart. Mm. Uh, I, I, I'm able to witness um, in a very humbling way uh, I'm able to witness uh, someone uh, talking to the Lord yeah. Yeah. and the Lord using my voice, mm. um, uh, using my presence, uh, this person uh, really trying his or her very best to, to, to go back into that right relationship with, with God. I mean, I, I feel embarrassed. I feel humbled. I feel privileged yeah. um, because no one else is seeing this no one else right. is able to witness this uh, the same thing with with the um, the anointing of the sick mm. when, when someone uh, is experiencing that healing uh, and they may not experience a cure right. but they're experiencing this healing this incredible healing power of god mm. when i lay my hands on their head uh, for for that sacrament uh, and then eventually anointing them with the oil. It's a very privileged moment. Um, uh, and I usually try to have the family and sometimes the family is experiencing exactly the same thing. Mm. That's why I, I always tell my parishioners, please don't call me for anointing mm -hmm. only when the person is on his last yeah. dying breath. Yeah. Mm. Because right then at that time, everyone is panicking. <laughs> And right. it's hard to pray hard when to you're pray. panicking, you're right? You know, yeah. and so to to really come to the priest and make an appointment with the priest and call the priest yeah. uh, as soon as you know you're about to go for surgery, about to, uh, and you can certainly call the priest again. There's yeah. no, but go at a time when you're still relatively able to respond, mm. because if I'm responding in a in an ICU bed. And, and I'm saying, and there's no one else because right. it's isolation, ICU. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm saying, the Lord be with you. And all I hear is this. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Mm. You know, yeah, it's, right. it's hard to celebrate yeah. that. So I always tell uh, families, like, please, yeah. uh, when I hear someone is sick or brought to the hospital, I, I call the family. Like, hey, do you want me to come over? Yeah, right. Oh. I don't want to get that panic call. No, no. Yes, yes. And so, I think, yeah. yeah. And I think people don't realize um, anointing of the sick until they really need it or until they're at that moment. Um, you know, they think about baptism, of course, and all these other sacraments, but they don't think of anointing of the sick until someone yeah. they know or someone they love is in that state. Um, so I, I, <laughs> I really love those sacraments. Oh, you mentioned baptism. Oh, I love <laughs> baptism. Yes. <laughs> I mean, aside from the fact that we're gaining in numbers of followers of Christ, right. both adult and children, uh, the children have that cute <laughs> attitude there. Yeah. But 
especially when I'm preparing the families, the parents for the, the, the mm. sacrament. Yes. And then I tell them like, hey, you know the response that you're saying yes for your kid. Right. And and they there it's like there's there's this light bulb just <laughs> clicks. Yeah. And then we celebrate it. And then I sometimes I like to, especially if it's uh, if it's within the mass, I like to explain a little bit some of the mm. rituals of what's what's going on. What's going on, yeah. And they 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 click and and and, and I and it's 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 fantastic so I I really love them all but uh in different uh in, for different reasons uh yeah, yeah. so <laughs> wedding the same thing uh, yeah. I mean wedding is the same thing I've been going to different ordinations since I've been in the seminary mm. uh, I've been uh, asked to to represent the seminary in uh, in ordinations and I see the, the blessing of this priest going into the community. Um, mm. And then the same thing, I see that for weddings. And I, you know, because um, I, a lot of times from the secular point of view, and sometimes we, we hear this with a lot of Catholics, that the wedding is a day of the woman. And I <laughs> always disagree with that. Right. I always yeah. disagree with that. No. No. Um, no. I, I want to make sure that the groom is also walking down the aisle. <laughs> yes. Uh, and I want it to be within uh, within the liturgical context because mm. uh, it, it's really a sacrament of service, uh, mm. uh, just like in a way uh, parallel to the sacrament of ordination. It's right. a vocation it's a that vocation. that that they're entering into, and a vocation to serve the people of God, to serve their families, and and to serve God in the end. So. <laughs> Thank you, Father. I know you can't choose one because, like you said, in different ways, they're all special. So, and they're, all, you know, they're the seven sacraments. It's amazing so. to me how both priests said confession. Like, wow. And then when I interviewed the other two priests, um, one of them also said confession. Like, um, he mentioned, um, he said confession is another way or another avenue to express God's love to someone who might be suffering from guilt of sin or who might be carrying a heavy burden. And um, to be able to express God's love to them is beautiful. <laughs> so good. Um, and the same priest also said that he loves baptism um, because you're not only bringing children or uh, people to the Christian community, but you're also an instrument um of uh, of Christ um so he this priest sees um not only you know the number of Christians increasing but being that instrument of, for Christ and of Christ to the babies and to the families and that's so important to see um and to be an instrument of Christ that's what we're all called to do so so beautiful um, the same priest also said um, anointing of the sick. Um, so in case you don't know what anointing of the sick, that's going to be next month's sacrament of the month. But anointing of the sick is um, when the priest visits um, the sick and their family and they pray or they um, bless them with holy oil and um, they pray with the sick and the sick, um, the family of the sick, sorry. And... Um, this father said, um, it is a wonderful but very difficult time um, that you're consoling the dying, but you're also consoling the family. So it's, um, it's uh, to me, the way he described it is of a um, oxymoron. You know, it's supposed to be, you know, it's a time when everyone's together, but they're um, together for a sad reason. But it's a beautiful thing because you're seeing everyone um, come together in the pain and the struggle um, and you know just the unity of being with family um, so that's a beautiful thing um, the other priest also said the same thing anointing of the sick um, he says um, I love giving the sacrament of the sick being able to pray and anoint people as they transition to the next life is a blessing that I continue to be in awestruck by life is precious and short ah, so good so good thank you uh to the priest who answered that question honestly um and i know it's hard um there are seven sacraments and just choosing one as you can see is very difficult and so thank you um all to all the priests being honest um i i don't have a favorite myself they're all 
they're also good um and this is just coming from a lay person's perspective like how could i choose right so yeah uh, we'll continue with the next question and that question is what is one thing that you wish people knew about priests uh, father raj and father bong had um great answers and they had similar answers to the other two priests so i'm gonna let them um take it away go ahead father raj and father bong Probably the most helpful thing and what might be the most fruitful is mm. is um uh, i would hope that that folks know everyone right so you know people's church experiences is, is all different um some are really involved some are not as involved some just right. come uh to sunday mass and all they see is is the priest you know for an hour at a time um but i think i think probably one of the most fruitful things to share is that is that we're all different and we're all unique yeah. all of us priests and um but you know trust trust the holy spirit in the fact that you know the priest that you have right now in your parish or the one that that is helping you with marriage prep or the one that's mm. coming to bless your house or whatever <laughs> yeah. that there that um that the holy spirit has as um place that priest in that parish or in your life for a reason right and and they may not be the one you want or they, 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 their personalities might be slightly different or right. you, you know I think sometimes we get in I you know so I was a lay person in the church before I became a priest and <laughs> and I did this too so I, I know sometimes we compare one priest to another priest and like you know why why, why couldn't you do it this way or why doesn't this mm -hmm. priest do that and, but you know all of our personalities are different yeah. and we all have different journeys and so um, I'm not saying don't demand um, excellence out of your priest. No, we mm. we, sh we should, right? We should we should you should have a, a desire that your priest be better. But but don't just like say oh, I wish he was better, and <laughs> yeah, then not right. and then not uh, help them, right? If you think like for instance, if you think that your priest could do better at um, at youth ministry, then invite mm. them to youth ministry things or help yeah. them, right? Like help them understand what the young okay. people are going through. Or if, if you feel like um, um, your, your priest doesn't speak, um, you know, it, it's hard to understand your priest mm. for whatever reason, maybe you can help with that with, you know, you know, start up a campaign to get a better sound system, whatever it is, right? Right, right, right. right. Like, or, or any other ways that you can understand, you know. So that my point is, is like, we're not, we don't go through the seminary and then we're perfect priests or yeah, right. perfect priests. We're, we still have our own faults, right? And we, we have our own personalities. And um, and I think sometimes, not all the time, people are really generous and really kind and, and yeah. at the parish and and really understanding. But there, but sometimes every now and again, folks are like, well, why is why did we get this priest? Or why didn't mm. we get that priest? And and I would say just trust, uh, trust in the Holy Spirit. And if you really want a greater selection of priests and encourage more young, young men to enter the seminary, <laughs> nice. right? So, yes. um, so you know, and, and that's another part of it, right? That some dioceses um, just, uh, we, we don't have, where whereas you know you before you could have had three priests at a parish and then mm. you know some families like this priest and some families like that priest and and you can connect with your priests on different levels now just because of that like because of the vocation shortage it's it's harder to um to engage with priests in, in that way so okay so i mean that I, that was a couple of different things wrapped into one yeah, yeah. of what i'd like people to know about priests. No. but priests are people too is the there bottom line priests yes. are people too <laughs> Um, I eat, I do laundry. I <laughs> We're human beings before mm. we are priests. Okay. That's simple. That's simple. <laughs> that really is simple. Uh, that we are human beings and we should act like human beings and we should be treated like human beings. Mm. Um, we may be of different colors and we, we may speak with different accents mm. and different languages for that matter. Uh, and, and therefore, we should learn how to deal uh, with the individual mm. uh, uh, and with proper consideration to who they are, not exactly what they represent, uh, but who they are as a child of God mm. and be, okay. to be treated as such, to be such. treated as a child of God. Yeah. Uh, that's probably the, the first thing that I want to to the, for, I want people to know mm -hmm. um, we are human beings. We get tired, we get cranky, we get joyful. Uh, and, and there are things that we really cherish. We, uh, we get lonely. 
um, mm. and uh, and we get we enjoy having a nice camaraderie with <laughs> friends and 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 uh, and so to to put sometimes to uh, priests depending on which culture but i think most cultures priests are put into pedestals mm. that are very difficult to 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 live up to and if once the priest begins to believe in that pedestal mm, right that's when father fred's voice will boom out <laughs> don't have secret life because a lot of times we begin to believe that we need to live up to that standard right. and we lose our identity. Mm. We lose our uniqueness because all of a sudden we're just living up to an understanding of what people is asking us That's to live. Right. Mm. You know, we, we should live a life of integrity, no secrets. Yes, entitled to a private life, um, but uh, mm. to be, to, to act, and, and this is for us priests too, to, to really to think of ourselves first as a human being before a manager, before yeah. an administrator, yeah. right. before uh, 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 um, someone who, who, uh, who, who does a job, right. you know, mm. because a lot of times it can be all about the job. And guess what? When it's all about the job, we have burnout. out. Mm. And so, uh, so yeah, uh, we are human beings. Father Raj and Father Bong um, said in the video um, or in their interviews, priests are people too. Um, I can't reiterate that enough. You know, working with priests myself um, is true. They're people too. They, you know, they have different personalities. They're uh, they like their own dislikes and their own hobbies and their own likes. And um, knowing your priest on that level is also. Uh, amazing thing and encourage you to get to know your priests a little more um, another priest also mentioned to pray for your priests you know I know oftentimes we ask uh, priests to pray for us but they also need our prayers um, like just like all human beings um, they're in need of prayers and so whenever you do your daily prayers whether that's in the morning or evening or both um, just please um, make a short prayer uh, for your priests, his well-being, um, their, um, you know, their personality, I guess, their um, endeavors, their uh, responsibility to their community and to their parish. So just think about that as you, um, as you pray um, for your families, for your friends, and then also for your priests. Um, that's such a um, awesome reminder. So to so then the last question, and that last question is... What is the best part of being a priest? And I did not um, prepare for this. I didn't prep them or anything. They all said the similar um, answers. And that's really crazy to me. But um, just to summarize um, what all the priests had in common, um, it was that they love being part of people's lives. Um, one priest said it was a privilege to see them in their, their, uh, in the good times and the bad times of all these people's lives. You know, they're invited to baptisms, weddings. They're invited to like anointing of the sick, funeral masses, um, everything in between. And for them, it is a privilege to be part of that person's life. Because oftentimes when a priest is involved, it's a special time. You know, you only get baptized once you um you only get confirmed once you um you know you only wed once um you only have a funeral mass once you know like these things are very special and very um close to the heart for most families and most people and for priests to be part of that it's a beautiful thing and you don't have to hear my summary of it you can hear father rajas and father bong so let's do that just the honest like the realness of being with people where they are um mm. and meeting you know in the joy like, similar to what i just said what was exhausting but like being invited to people's into people's lives and like incredibly joyous moments mm -hmm. being able to bless a new home cars those kind of things yeah. um celebrate weddings and all that stuff 
and then also um you know the the privilege that it is to journey with folks when they're grieving mm. or or you know being in the confessional even when i'm tired and then somebody yeah. walks in who hasn't who hasn't been in confession for you know 20 30 40 years or whatever and like um to say okay you know i was tired but this is why i was sitting in the chair right mm. like and so to be um that's the best part of it that that constantly being used by god um is is such a blessing ah that's so nice for me this is this gives me happiness when i am given the privilege to share in the mm. painful moments of parishioners mm. when i am there uh when someone just died or someone just got a diagnosis that is that is terrible um mm. when i am there and i'm called uh, when someone just was just born Hmm. Uh, and he say, "Hey, we got another Christian." <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, um, so, so uh, the ability, the 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 uh, privilege of being with people, hmm. because I truly believe that God, apart from the sacraments, hmm. is really present in the people. Hmm. So that's yeah. encountering God through the sacraments and the main sacrament of god who is the church i don't know if you know right. that oftentimes we <laughs> think of sacraments as the seven sacraments right yes yes but lumen gentium actually talks about jesus christ as the primordial sacrament mm. and from jesus christ comes the church church yes and from the church the seven sacraments so by that logic yeah. jesus christ is the primordial sacrament the church is that sacrament that comes out of jesus christ mm. because the sacrament yeah. is is that whole and i don't mean to be lectury right now oh, no no yeah <laughs> but really the sacrament is that which brings the presence of god uh, the word that we use is efficacious it brings into effect yes. that which it signi signifies yes yes so mm. the the love of god the presence of god yeah, right. is is signaled by the church mm. and at the same time it in in real time brings it about yes so that's why the church is a sacrament did you know that sarah Mac? i did not that's why i'm just like i'm just trying to take it in <laughs> yes so drop the mic yes. <laughs> i don't have i have a pen <laughs> there you go <laughs> okay i don't want to drop yeah. this it still has some coffee no, no. <laughs> Okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. We tr we look yeah. at Jesus Christ as the that the one who brings about the kingdom of God into our mm. midst, the sacrament of God. And with Jesus Christ, uh, out of Jesus Christ comes the church. Mm. And out of the church yeah. comes these seven very privileged mm -hmm. moments. Yeah. uh when we celebrate what we call the sacraments, sacraments. Mm. the seven sacraments wow but jesus nice. is the primordial sacrament <laughs> you can look it up <laughs> okay Hi everyone thank you for watching my video on the sacrament of holy orders and a special thank you to all the priests that i interviewed thank you for taking the time and the moment to reflect on these questions and answer them honestly i really do appreciate it um i really hope that all of you learn something from this video i definitely did um and i really hope that it showed you um what it's like to be a priest just a glimpse and what priests are really about um if you want to watch um, father raj's full interview check the link down below and that goes for father bong's um, interview as well the full interview um what you saw was snippets and clippets clippets that's not a word um snippets and clips of their whole interview so um if you want to watch the full interview i suggest you do so there's the link um they're awesome priests so thank you to everyone who participated and if you guys have any questions let me know hopefully i can get one of the priests to answer them this is sarah mack hope you all enjoy hope you subscribe you know where that red button is and don't forget to follow me at it's mac on instagram and twitter